Good evening uh, again and welcome back to Vision 2030. Uh, we, are, we have been talking about the importance of education in the development of our community here in UK. I've been talking uh, with three of our distinguished guests uh, from different backgrounds. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Karim from University of Leicester. We also have Councillor uh, Kabir and uh, Prince uh, Sadiq Chowdhury. We, like I said, we've been talking about the imp importance of education and, and they've been sharing uh, their uh, successes uh, in terms of their educational, achieving their educational excellence uh, so far. So I, I want to touch on um, the children's education within our community and uh, you, you may be uh, aware that according to the Department of Education uh, figure uh, back in 2015 which is not very long ago 62% of the Bangladeshi student got five uh, good GCSEs uh, that includes English and maths uh, which is really good which is 5% above the national average so in terms of our children's education uh, we're really uh, seeing a, uh, a greater achievement uh, to their education attainment compared to how the situation uh, was a decade ago. Um, we're also, uh, particular improvements also have been made uh, with Bangladeshis who are receiving free school meals. So when, when the research uh, looked into that, uh, they found that Bangladeshi children who are receiving free school meals are doing better than other minority communities who are also uh, receiving free school meals. So basically, I think what I'm trying to say is uh, despite the, the, the challenges uh, that we have within our communities in terms of work and, and other areas educational attainment is improving especially with our uh, younger children so I want to ask I mean I mean for our children um, Dr. Karim education is obviously uh, is spiritual uh, it's also societal uh, it's also cultural mm -hmm. so my question is to to our, to our guest here are we really overburdening our children to learn much more than compared to other communities and, uh, and, and how can you get the right balance uh, between those three uh, the different aspects of education in our children's lives? Dr. Okay. Um, I don't think it's a burden. I think mm -hmm. even other um, religions have the same issue in okay. terms of spirituality. I think it's difficult to balance all of those. Mm -hmm. um, the cultural aspect, being British, being Muslim, being Sileti, also wanting to become educated. I think that balance is difficult. I think when I was growing up, it was a little bit easier okay. uh, in the early days in order to do that because you had a family support network, which mm -hmm. was really important. Now we know that there are s quite serious issues mm -hmm. with uh, dysfunctional families, mm -hmm. which ha can have a serious impact on the development of children. Um, well, I ran an outreach activity in the Department of Chemistry with a number of colleagues for uh, disadvantaged children in the area of Leicester. And that was with uh, Moj Bashir, who was mm -hmm. uh, Imam of the Dar es Salaam Mosque in Leicester. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that a lot of these children do come from very dysfunctional family mm -hmm. backgrounds, which can affect their ability Okay. To, to become you know, better at education. So that was the biggest problem, for example, that he had in that socially deprived area that I, okay. was, that I became aware of. And a lot of that was actually educating the parents mm -hmm. so that you can educate the children. Okay, to get the they right ha balance. They yeah. have to act as that support, <clears throat> the spiritual support, absolutely, the cultural support, but also the support in their education. It doesn't mean that they need to have the knowledge of the subject matter that mm -hmm. the children are actually studying in. Mm -hmm they can instill making sure that they do their homework on time, mm -hmm. engaging with the school in extracurricular activities. There's little things that you can do. Those habits that you do little and often yeah. will magnify themselves into something significant. Thank you, Dr. Better. Kareem. I'm going to come back to you. Sure. I think we have a caller on the line. Hello, caller. What is your name and where you call it? Okay, the caller is we lost the call. Okay, uh, please call us back uh, um, uh, when you get the chance. Thank you very much. So going back to uh, what you were saying, uh, Dr. Karim, uh, is, is the fact that, you know, you're saying, no, we're not overburdening our uh, kids. Uh, it's, it's in a way better for them? Yeah. Well, I think society mm -hmm. sometimes is overburdening children okay. because I think we're losing, I think we'd all agree, we're losing that spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of society. It's materialistic. Okay. It's the acquisition of, of, of goods, of okay. wealth, you know, social media. Mm -hmm. having those bad habits which can affect a child's education mm -hmm. and maybe the children understanding more about technology than their parents okay. which is also a problem because okay. if, the, if the parents can understand the technology better than the children then they can at least police it which mm -hmm. I think is really mm -hmm. important yeah. and they, they don't necessarily have the tools to be able to do that mm -hmm. and I think that actually is, is quite a major problem. 
Um, so the spiritual aspect, I think, is fine. You have children that have to go to Arabic school, Islamic mm -hmm. school, so some children are doing seven days a week. Brilliant. We've got the caller back online, so we'll take the call. Hello, <laughs> caller. Uh, uh, what is your name and where you calling from, please? Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Brother, my name is uh, Fakhrul Islam, uh, also known as uh, Maj Bashir, uh, to Professor uh, Karim. I'm phoning from Leicester. Okay. okay. Salam alaikum. Thank you for joining the show. Please, uh, do you have any anything to say to the panel? Um, I, I just want to publicly thank Professor Professor Karim. Um, I'm uh, one of the committee members at uh, the Leicester Darul Salam Masjid, mm -hmm. and um, Pro Professor Karim, he's a very intelligent person. But very, very down to earth. Very proud of his heritage. You know, lot, lot of us. You know, uh, our, our fathers and uncles worked in the catering trade, and he doesn't hide this. Yeah. Um, and what I find really valuable from that is, you know, that um, the children of today can engage with him as a role model. Because he hasn't come from a different background. He's come from the same background as a lot of these children. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I just wanted to thank him. He gave us a wonderful opportunity last year where we took a handful of children um, from our madrasa to the chemistry department um, where they were doing um, uh, some uh, detective work in the labs, which they found really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of these children... Mm -hmm because of that trip, end up going as far as university. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, he's an asset to our community. He's such an educated person. And if only we had more and more people like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our community would go forward um, uh, qu quicker than it, it is going, going at the moment. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. And I think, you know, you. You're, you're absolutely right. We need uh, good role models within yeah. our community. Mm -hmm. And one of the... Uh, pivotal aspect of becoming success successful is being humble. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Dr. K uh, uh, the caller was saying, uh, that Dr. Karim is humble. And I think, you know, in all our lives, mm -hmm. you know, if we, if we can become humble, we'll be uh, better successful in our lives. Can I, can I just yeah? say one comment? Um, the first day mm -hmm. of um, my PhD, um, I was in the unfortunate situation where my PhD supervisor died after my Ooh. first year, so I had to start my PhD again. Mm -hmm. And I was leaving the laboratory and there was a wet patch on the floor and I just left it. And then I came back across the laboratory area and I noticed my PhD supervisor was mopping the floor okay. and he was head of department. And uh, I met him the next day and he said, the first thing my PhD supervisor taught me on the first day of my PhD is never say it's not my job. Mm -hmm. So he's a head of department who is cleaning the floor. Wow. So you should never feel that anything is beneath you. Beneath you yeah. So even somebody cleaning the laboratories, if the laboratories weren't clean, you wouldn't be able to perform mm -hmm. your job. It's a great function. example of being yeah. humble. And that's the, that's the first thing that he says. So I say yeah. the first thing to my PhD students mm -hmm. on their first day is never say it's not my <laughs> no, job. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Hello, caller. Where, what's your Hello. Name? Hello there. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, uh, can, we, can we have your name and where you calling from, please? I'm in London. I'm Mrs. Islam. Yes, uh, hello, Mrs. Islam. Welcome hello. to the show. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, do you have any suggestions or any questions that you want to ask? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, can I speak to you in Bengali? Yeah, of course you can speak in Bengali. Yeah, I'm a suggestion holo. যে তারা রিয়েলি তিনটা লোক নিয়ে আসছে যারা খুবই আমাদের পছন্দের খুব ভালো রোল মডেল কিন্তু ওরা যেভাবে নিজেরা কষ্ট করে কিংবা হার্ড ওয়ার্ক করে ওনারা এই পজিশনে গেছেন Brilliant. It does take a lot of hard work to achieve mm -hmm. uh, whatever, I mean, maybe or, uh, um, you know, jobs or educational uh, attainment. It is very hard work. And I think, like I said, our guests have um, demonstrated that, you know, by working hard, you can achieve uh, a lot in your life. So thank you very much for your call. Uh, and uh, with, uh, I'm also asking other callers if you want to join in in this very important discussion. Mm -hmm. Going back to um, Councillor Kabir, um, I mean, in terms of um, the relationship between parents and the children, um, uh, and also uh, how can we build that uh, relationship better when it comes to education? Because often you may, um, you know, find that uh, there is lack of communication between parents and children. So how can we address that? Mm -hmm. um, 
There, there, there are several ways that mm -hmm. parents can encourage their children uh, for education. And it could be that care, the parents are very highly educated. Mm -hmm. It could be that the parents are less educated. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't make a difference uh, to parents encouraging mm -hmm. their children to, to study, mm -hmm. to have expectations of their children. Course. And to what I think is most important is to build the aspiration of their children mm -hmm. to be educated okay. in whatever sphere it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, as my colleague here was saying, it could be spiritual education, it be, could be cultural education, and it could be the, uh, the more scholastic academic ed education. But mm -hmm. if the parents are there and they have expectations of their children mm -hmm. and they're building their children's aspiration to mm -hmm. achieve, mm -hmm. that is a support. Okay. And as I said, you don't have to be highly educated to do that. Mm -hmm. you, you can do that by asking, have you done your homework? How is it at school today? Um, have you, I, w I would like you to read. I think children should read at home. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. a skill that we're losing in, in the home, and I can see that, to be quite honest with my, my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. it's, everything is on screen, mm -hmm. and it's very easy. So you see everything in pictures or action, but you don't, you're not actually reading the printed word. Yeah, yeah. I think children should read at least half an hour every day. Mm -hmm. People may think that I'm old-fashioned, mm -hmm. but it did me very well, mm -hmm. that discipline. I mean, it's a very important uh, uh, um, aspect of uh, yeah, we have another call, I think, on the line. Hello, caller, where are you calling from? Uh, uh, and your name, please? Hello, caller. Hello, caller, can I have your name and where are you calling from, please? Uh, wa alaikum salam. My name is Ibrahim Rahman. I'm calling from Cambridge. Hi, Ibrahim. Welcome to the show. And thank you very much. I uh, just want to say, um, well, you're doing a really good discussion. I think it's about a, a very important topic. It's something that's certainly very important to me. And uh, so I just want to say well done to all of you and to Chandler for, for bringing this topic up tonight. I also wanted to uh, mention my uncle, uh, Dr. Kal Karim. Uh, he is, uh, you know, it's nice to see him on the show. So I want to say salam alaikum to you and to all the other guests as well. Um, but um, I just wanted to also mention that my uncle is, uh, you know, he's certainly a very inspirational person to me uh, certainly has um, been really ramming about education um, from a very young age really to me and just highlighting how important it is and he's played a really important role in my development uh, not just in education but also as a person I think and I think that's also very important about the other qualities that he's also managed to bring um, in terms of helping me to grow as a person so you know I just want to use the opportunity to say thank you for the, for the hard work that he's done and you know, I hope that, um, and also for the other guests as well, the other work that we're doing, you know, mm -hmm. please keep that, keep that going, and please continue to, to help the community. I think that's very important. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. You've, uh, you've, you know, it's very encouraging that uh, you mm. know you've encouraged other generation, the younger generation, to achieve uh, well, you know, uh, better education and better career prospects. Well, it's interesting. He's what 27 years old, mm -hmm. and now he's inspiring the younger generation. Yeah. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, you help someone, point. then it moves on. And I think that continuity is really important. Mm -hmm. we, we need to have some foundations to build on. If you don't have them, then it just all falls mm -hmm. apart. Uh, going to Prince um, Chowdhury, um, uh, what approach do you think uh, uh, we need to take to educate our children? Uh, I think it's most important that we could have a regular interaction with mm -hmm. the children. I remember um, when I see my kids with my wife actually, what she normally does every day she will work and sit down with the kids a few hours and try to discuss about how they're done in the school and uh, then is there any problem how they can improve what's happening and she used to attend a regular sort of like um, parent evenings and mm -hmm. try to have a word with the teachers how he or she can make improvement and I think I can, I actually seen that actually because my, one of my son actually is uh, attending a kiddie minister, uh, is a madrasa mm -hmm. and school. Is. Mm -hmm. And uh, before Christmas holiday, I attended um, for the parent day and they have one of the English teachers. He came to me and say, I'm amazing about your son Sahil actually. We are doing at the moment level two English and mm -hmm. his English is so good, you know, he's in a level four. Mm -hmm. And the highest you can achieve in the four or five years time is six, level six. Okay. I think he's, he's tremendously doing well in English, math and science. Mm -hmm. And this is because my wife, she had her education, so she has, she's got a degree in law, also she had a LPC. She used to sit down with the kid and regularly do the homeworks and spend a lot of time, her free time with the children. And I can see that that's the uh, uh, impact which, which she put it on the children. And I think it's very important to have a foundation, a very strong foundation at mm -hmm. home. 
having uh, educated mothers. Mm -hmm. She's the one who can make the change, actually. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm also very optimistic to see the girls, especially now this day, achieving very well in GCSE, A-level, or academic and qualification. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. That's what we need, actually, having a mother foundation, very strong foundation at home. So you need a role model with yes. the home as yes. well as outside as well. Yes. And I think what you've, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, Councillor Kabir also mentioned mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. communication is very important. Very you know, you don't have yeah. to yeah. have a degree uh, mm -hmm. as a parent, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if you communicate with your children about yeah. their mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the, the course at the school mm. and, and support mm. them is very mm. important. So I think my, I want to also highlight and also I want to understand that do the current generation of children who are mostly the third and the fourth generation mm. of British Bangladeshis still face the barriers uh, that the second generation of children faced in this country or are the challenges and the barriers as different, different to how you were growing up to the children of today? Dr. Kabir, um, Councillor Kabir, um, There will always be barriers. You, it, it's not just mm -hmm. for the British Bangladeshi community. There are barriers for everyone. Uh, the generational barriers are changing. Um, for instance, my generation, and I'm 68 now, okay. in my generation, you, you could achieve things without being highly educated. You had to be, education was a, a plus point, but you could, you mm -hmm. could manage kind of thing. Okay. The jobs were different. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, the competition, and we were talking about this earlier, the competition is so fierce now mm -hmm. that everything counts on your CV. So mm -hmm. when you're writing your CV, you have to write about your education, you have to write about your extracurricular ac activities, you have, you have to write about uh, what kind of trips you've been on, all sorts of things. But to get the job, that extra, extra achievement in your education will get you a job. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it was less important mm -hmm. in previous generations. It was important, but I think much less because the competition is so, so much greater now. Yes, indeed, indeed. And, and also, uh, I mean, obviously, if you wanted to uh, uh, have a career progression, yes, uh, a degree perhaps wasn't mm. as important then mm. than it is now. Yeah. So there is uh, those uh, mm. areas, that, special areas that we need to bear in mind. Uh, I mean, before we, I think we'll be going to break in a bit, but I just wanted to learn from you um, and some advice in a way. Um, um, in terms of the support mechanism that we can put in place at home yeah. uh, for our children to enrich our children's educational experience. I mean, many of the uh, families watching today, I mean, they would probably, they want to know, you know, how can I support my mm. children's educational d uh, development? So what tangible, what um, uh, support mechanism that we can literally put at home uh, so that we can help our children, uh, Dr. Kareem? Well, I mean, Sandra mentioned about um, uh, families or the parents engaging mm -hmm. and with their children and you don't have to be educated to do that mm. you can have a high level of education or not but you've got to it's not just engaging with your children mm -hmm. it's also participating with your children mm -hmm. and also participating in the school mm -hmm. I think that's really important I know that for example if you look at it general picture of the Bangladeshi community we've they say we've integrated because mm -hmm. we've made lots of restaurants and we bring mm -hmm. in hundreds of millions of pounds worth of money <laughs> yeah. into the economy yeah. that's integration but it's not participation mm -hmm. do we have Bangladeshis that are doctors, that are judges, what we do now, yeah. but, but mm. that, are, that are in civil society. Mm. Do, we, do we have a spectrum of Bangladeshis in those areas? Mm -hmm. And you, you'd have to question that. Mm -hmm. But it really goes down to the fundamental fundamentals right at the early stage of mm -hmm. child's development is you've got to really engage and participate. You mentioned about having all these extracurricular things on the CV. As careers mm -hmm. tutor, mm -hmm. we tell our students, you know, why don't you do some voluntary work with the, mm -hmm. with the Islamic society mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or, or do something, go mm -hmm. to a local hospice or, mm -hmm. or ask to help out. All of those extracurricular activities will be a benefit for you on your CV. Mm -hmm as well as your grades, yeah. as well as your 2-1, mm -hmm. as well as your first or whatever. Because they're looking for rounded individuals. They're looking for students that do have transferable skills. Skills, skills and attributes that are outside their subject area that mm -hmm. they can implement in other areas. Mm -hmm. But that has to start quite early on. It's that participation getting children engaged in other activities and not just so the for academic example, side as well. For example, if, if, uh, uh, if your child wants to play football, 
uh, don't stop him from playing football, mm -hmm. encourage him to do that, yeah. at the same time encourage him to do, take part in it, uh, you know, uh, uh, continue with their education. So, so you have to get the right balance, and that's mm -hmm. why you... Uh, so you've got to work hard, <coughs> which is what I did, but mm -hmm. you also have to play hard. So I did the yeah. sport at university, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I would revise eight, ten hours a day before mm -hmm. my exams, and in the evening I'd be free. Yeah. And people were saying, well, why are you not revising? Because mm -hmm. in the evening I'm not going to retain any knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've yeah. done all my work, so you've got to work hard, you've got to play hard, you have to have that downtime, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. About the exercise and everything yeah. in order to prepare you for the next day. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Otherwise, you are going to overburden the child. Okay, that's that's a very good point, um, um, Prince. Um, you've mentioned about your children and they've, yeah. they've gone into education, uh, yeah. and you've talked about your uh, your wife's uh, yeah. contribution she in was. that. Um, was there anything at home that you had to prepare for for your children? Um, oh. Sometimes having a desk is very important. Yes, uh, having a chair mm -hmm. and a desk. I think uh, as I. I never had education before until now. My wife had an advantage before me. Mm -hmm. So she thought about what was the right appropriate. And mm -hmm. I had, a, especially the privilege, she mm -hmm. was taking great care of the children. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's very important we have to identify the children, what they are good at, actually. Mm -hmm. Sometimes do not pressurize to do something which they are not good at, actually. Mm -hmm. They have to pick something, any career, anything in the advance mm -hmm. in the future, mm -hmm. something they are naturally good at. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, is very important because now this day, this is just in, in Northampton general, or maybe in the, our community, I want my son to be doctor, mm -hmm. engineer, or barrister. Mm -hmm. This is not the only avenue we can go, actually. There's many other avenues which we can reach and we still can conquer. Mm -hmm. I think we are very proud as a Bengali in this country where, especially if you look at the community, actually, they have to rely on the most of the jobs outside. Mm -hmm. We have created ourselves like a restaurant, as a brother mentioned before, the professors. We have our own institute where we can have a platform we can start something with. I think it's very important we need to create a role model in the community where people can be inspired and achieve something mm -hmm. exceptional. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at Anwar Chowdhury who was here on the channel last yesterday, he's the, one of the remarkable examples for the Bangladeshi community what they can achieve. Mm -hmm. He was a British High Commissioner in Bangladesh in 2007. I believe, um, I remember when I was a councillor when I visited, I didn't realise he was my relative until I visited him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's something we need to produce in the Bangladeshi community. Uh, uh, like uh, the professors uh, mentioned, a lot of people are now achieving mm. a PhD. Okay. We never heard about the PhD before, you know, I, mean, mm -hmm. I never think about it, having education. When my parents came to this country, the first thing they had is that uh, to how to survive and get established, mm -hmm. have a better life. Mm -hmm. When all my siblings grew up, all my dad was waiting to get 16 and that's mm -hmm. the stop so I can have a ma more manpower in the restaurants. Mm -hmm. I think that's a mistake we made it actually. We should be okay. more broad minded and think it more positively yeah, what we can mm -hmm. achieve. Thank you. Thank you, Prince. And I think we have to go uh, for a break. There's a lot to talk about, especially <laughs> so in education. Yeah. <laughs> but the key thing to, for us to remember is that, you know, we have to continue to inspire our yeah. children. Uh, it do, you don't have to be, uh, 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 you don't have to hold a degree to inspire children. You can motivate them. You also need to encourage them to take up uh, extracurriculum activities, which will also build their yeah. uh, mental and mm -hmm. physical uh, um, well-being so that they can uh, uh, focus on their education better. So thank you very much for joining us so far. Please do come back after the break. Thank you.